everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, welcome. We're the Garza Twins. I'm Carly. And I'm Britta. And if you like this video or any of our other videos, we'd love it if you would subscribe so you see all of our uploads. Yes, please. And today we're doing a fun video. We decided to narrow down our top five makeup brushes. And this is kind of an updated top five mm -hmm. brush video. I feel like we've done maybe even a couple on our channel I think before. we have, yeah. But it's been definitely over a year. I feel like we have some new favorites, but some tried and true. Yeah. And we always find that like really, really helpful, at least for me, like if I'm watching someone who's been using a tool or a product for years and years, I really know that it's going to be good. Yeah, and I think in the past, our brush videos, we just sort of like gathered all the ones we loved and talked about them, like they were pretty lengthy. Yeah. So we really wanted to like edit this down and just be like, this is my top five, this is your top five. Yeah. Like these are the brushes that we absolutely need in our collection. Yes. Okay, we're gonna start with kind of a dupe brush because I have the more affordable version and Carly has the high end. All of my brushes are kind of expensive besides one, but it's okay. Yeah, this one- Oh, yours are two. I have two affordable. Mm -hmm. Um, but this one I've been using for years, basically since it launched. It's the Morphe Same. Jaclyn Hill JH06 My Everything Brush, and it is $14 on Ulta, so very affordable, and I use this for blush. I don't know how, I mean, mm -hmm. you probably use yours for a few other things, but I, this is my favorite blush brush for a few reasons. I feel like it's um, synthetic bristles, so it works with a variety of powders, I feel, and it's very, like, loosely packed, as you can see, very soft, loosely packed. It almost looks like a um, stipple brush because it has different like lengths going on of the bristles. It's not all one length. Um, so I ha believe that that really helps to diffuse powder. So this is my favorite for blush specifically because I can go in with a pigmented blush and it just deposits like a really light layer if I go in lightly and it will never like look muddy or build up the color too quickly. It just really gives you like a diffused almost watercolor look to anything you put on this. So I feel like I can use it with literally any blush I own and I feel like in the past some blush brushes like if they were too dense would only work with really sheer blushes and then I would have to go in with something different if a blush was more pigmented and this just works across the board and it just like fits on the hollows of my cheeks on like the top of my cheeks so effortlessly like i said i just never lay down too much product ever it never lays down too much color and then i also like you know that blush trend where people kind of put blush oh, here yeah. and i feel like i can do that easily and then eat on like the top of my nose a little bit too so it just lays down blush so perfectly yeah so mine is the smashbox what is it the buildable cheek brush i bought this even before britta got that because this launched before that did I think yeah. I've had it for four years, and if you look at it, like, I'm sure, like, this one also looks like it held up, but there's literally no loose, like, filaments or br bristles. Like, it just looks so intact, which is shocking. Like, I've had yeah. this for four years. Um, so I think the quality is definitely there. I feel like, so this is $36, so it's much more expensive than Brita's, but... I feel like these, the Smashbox brushes got a lot of hype when they first launched and then now like no one talks about them and I could only even find them available now on the Smashbox website. But I love this brush. Like I think that for the same reasons Berta said, it tapers like this. So it tapers up and there's like a bit of a dome on top. But the thing I love about it is that the bristles are so loose. Like there's literally, it's just the least dense brush I own. Yeah, so it's really so, only picking up at like the very top. Yes, so it's so easy to just get like a light layer of blush going. Like you can like swirl, you can dab, and it's never gonna look too heavy. And I feel like before I got this brush, my blush would always be so heavy and yeah. like, not even, cause I like a heavy blush, yeah. but it would look like patchy and just not the look Cause it I like wanted. went on heavy and then you try to blend it out with like another brush and then it got patchy yeah. and I was like, this is just, putting too much blush on my face. And I feel like brands still to this day create such dense blush brushes yeah. that I don't understand it. And I think that this is like the perfect, or even that one, is just such a like perfect blush brush. Um, so I love this. And I, I think I have, oh, I have used this with bronzer because I got this around the same time I got the Hourglass Unlocked palette. And it, because the brush is actually really small, it fit into all those pan wells. And I would like bring this in that palette on trips and use it for bronzer, use it for blush, use it for highlighter, and it would be like my one stop brush. Um, I haven't done that in a while, but it works for bronzer too. So great brush. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one I was trying to figure out how long I've had it, and I think it's been six years. Again, there is literally no bristles misplaced. This thing has held up 
superiorly. And it is the It Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe Complexion, Complexion Perfection Brush Number no. 7. And like every day I use these, I am shocked at, I'm just shocked at the quality. Out of all the ones I'm going to talk about, this is the one I've had the longest and the one that's held up the most. And to that point, I will say, and I'll mention it with all of these, that obviously like this is older and they've continue to manufacture this brush so I am recommending this brush but I do not know if in recent years they like change it in any way well, I would think not yeah it still seems to get good reviews so I'm sure it's still just as good of quality but what I love about this this side is definitely the side I use the most and again it kind of has like a domed top and as you can see it's like slightly dense but it definitely has some give to it it's not like very hard and so I definitely use this the most for foundation um, until, well, I'm going to talk about another brush, which is my all-time favorite foundation brush. But this is another one that I've gone on trips and used like this side for foundation, this side for concealer, and then use this side for cream blush, cream bronzer, like everything. Like this brush can almost do it all. I've even used this side for cream eyeshadow, like when you're in a pinch. I feel like if you're going to get any brush, like this one, honestly, I just feel like <laughs> it's so worth the money because it can do so much. Um, this blends out foundation so effortlessly. Like I've used it with fuller coverage foundation and because it's just like, you know, kind of loose, it just blends it out so nicely and you don't have like brush strokes. I've used it with tinted moisturizers. I've used it with more like oil heavy tinted moisturizers, which can be kind of like, I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but like some brushes can get kind of like gummy mm -hmm. or like they just don't really like move the product around well. Like this has truly worked with every complexion product I've used it with. And then it also works incredible for cream blush and bronzer. Before I got one of my newer brushes that I'm going to mention for cream bronzer, this was always my go-to. Um, I would just like dip it into any bronzer and stipple it on and blend it out and it blends it out effortlessly. So I just, I love this brush, like truly out of all the ones I'm gonna recommend, I think this one would be the one I would recommend the most. Okay, if Carly's talking about her favorite foundation brush, I'll talk about mm -hmm. mine next. Well, so, it's not even my favorite foundation brush because there's Just in general, one. okay. Yeah. So this is the MAC 170 brush. I know a lot of YouTubers talk about this, so it's nothing new. Again, I feel like this has been around for years. Yeah, I mean, all these brushes, like I said, are most of them are older for me. Yeah. But I think that that shows you guys that like we've loved these and we've used yeah. them. I think I've had this for probably about a year. And since I got it, I haven't used anything, an, another brush for foundation. Similar to what Carly was saying, well, this one, I think my favorite thing about it is that it's super densely packed. Yeah, that one's really dense. But really, really soft. And I like that it has this angle because I just find it so effortless to blend out foundation like like Carly mentioned this works with thin foundations it works with thicker like today I'm wearing the Neutrogena Hydro Boost I am tint too. that I wear almost every day of my life and that one if you've ever worn it it's so interesting because it goes on the skin really really thick and like moussey like and so I I've never used a sponge with that I always use a brush mm -hmm. um and I like to draw that on my skin and then I just like move this around and it blends out in two seconds but I also have used it with the wet and wild tinted hydrator which is a pretty thin type of tinted formula the tinted moisturizer type formula and that I just put on the back of my hand and then I really like work this into the product on the back of my hand and then I put it on my face and again like I've never had any streaking it's just deposited the perfect perfect amount of pigment, perfect amount of product, moves it around my face like in two seconds. It just blends so, so well. Um, I've never used a better foundation brush and I think it is just because, you know, it's soft, it's dense and it has that slanted shape just makes it so easy and it just works with everything. So it works really well at concealer too. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing I really love to use this for is like midday touch-ups. If my concealer is creasing, I'll just take this under the eye like so quickly and just like go like that and it just helps to like refresh my concealer without applying more product and then like in that same vein if I'm wearing like a cream bronzer you know how sometimes if you bring it up too far like this is really really easy to just like dab right there and just like make everything look more seamless again so multi-purpose it works with like any cream product too um it's just a really great brush definitely worth the price and now I might as well talk about my favorite foundation brush, another a cosmetics brush. They make really good brushes. So this one isn't currently available, but I'll explain. So it's the It Cosmetics Love is the Foundation brush. It's shaped like a heart. 
it's all kitschy like that. Um, and so they release this every year I in, think in February. February. Well, they were releasing it every year in February. I swear they released it like twice last year, but I can't really remember. Or was but it October? Oh, yes. It's uh, for breast cancer. Well, oh, we're in February, February, I think, isn't it? Um, well, I swear they released it twice last year. So they seem to be getting like releasing it more often because it is such a popular brush. So although I cannot link it right now, just look on Ulta um, and follow like trend mode and see when this brush is back because she usually posts as mm -hmm. well. Um, and it Kathleen is, Lights will post. Yes, yeah, like it. a lot of people love this brush and I bought the original one. So this is another one that I think I've had for five years. It's been five or four. Um, and I know, yeah, like Kathleen has talked about how like mm -hmm. some, some years, she feels like the quality changed. isn't as good as like the original one or, but then like, I think she said the newest one was good. Yeah, she so did. So I do hope that they continue to make the quality brush that I feel like people expect at this point. But I do think I got the original, original one. Um, and again, it is held up like pristinely. There are literally like, there's no shedding happening. And I like, it's just such a well-made brush. And what I love about this is similar to Britta's MAC brush. It's like pretty dense. It's more dense than Yeah, they actually this look really one. similar. Yeah, um, and it's actually pretty big and usually I don't like this, but because of a larger surface area, it can blend out my foundation like the quickest out of like, it's a quicker even than this one. And because it is more dense too, I feel like it keeps like pretty good coverage. Mm -hmm. And I just love this brush. I use it every single day, no matter what complexion product I use. Um, I just like literally just swirl in, like what I said, we use the Neutrogena today. Yeah. Just swirled it in. And then I always use this for concealer too. Every single day I use this for my concealer. I never use sponges anymore for anything. And I just find that this diffuses concealer so beautifully under the eyes. Like I just go like this and like dab, 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 dab. And it just blends out and it's so quick. And I love this brush. Again, I think there's a lot of hype behind this brush mm -hmm. and I feel like it's absolutely worth it as long as it cosmetics continues to make um, like the same quality brush that I bought. So look out for it when it's back. I will write the month below once we yeah. do some more research where we think it's sold. Okay. This is technically another foundation brush, but I primarily use it for cream bronzer. So this is the Merit number no. one tapered blending brush. Um, you can get it on Sephora and it's super cute. It's really, really soft. It's actually similar to these two, um, just in case you ask. This one, I feel like the Merit one is softer than the MAC, but the, the way that they're densely packed is about the same. They're both tapered, so the shape is pretty similar. But I think that since this is softer, that's why I like it for those really thick cream bronzers. Like I've used this for cream bronzer before and it works beautifully, but I think that because this is so soft and dense that it really like doesn't show any lines and just gives you that like perfect blend. And as of late, so I guess what I'm talking about when I say really thick cream bronzer is really the NARS, mm -hmm. um, what is it that even called? The NARS Bronzer and Laguna. Bronzing cream? Yeah, I know it's no longer available, but I still use that all the time and I love it. But it is like a silicone based, very pigmented, very thick bronzer. And so I feel like I've tried a few different brushes with it and they worked fine. Um, but it's just really hard to find a brush that works with that type of formula because it's going to look muddy if you apply too much and it doesn't blend out into like a thin layer. It's going to look streaky if you use a brush that isn't like densely packed like this. And, and soft enough. So I feel like it's, just, you're walking a fine line. It's not an easy formula to work with. I know that's why some people um, don't really like that formula. Mm -hmm. But I saw State of Kate talk about, I think she was doing like an Instagram get ready with me or maybe it was on her YouTube channel. But she said that for like, well, I don't know what bronzers, I forget what bronzer she was using this technique with, but she dots the bronzer like on her face with her finger and then blends it out. And I was like, why have I never done that before? That's like so brilliant, especially with that type of formula. That's like I said, very thick, very pigmented. So now I just take my finger and like swirl it into the NARS and then I'll like dot it right here and right here. And then I take this Merit brush and I just like kind of dab on top like this until it blends out. And you can kind of like swipe with this too and it won't look streaky, but I find that dabbing kind of works the best. And I'll just do that like, you know, around the perimeter of my face. And I feel like this brush 
blends that bronzer out so seamlessly and if it works with that bronzer I feel like it would work with literally any and um, I also tried this with the Danessa Myricks Balm Contour I usually use a sponge with that because it's such a balmy um, it's a thick texture, but you know, that like true balmy texture. So brushes don't really like pick up the product well. So I usually dip a sponge into that pan and then like put it on my face with a sponge. Um, but I found that this brush actually works with that product quite well. And I haven't, like I said, gotten another brush to work with it. So I feel like this brush is perfect for those cream bronzers that maybe have like a bit of a high maintenance application, but you love anyway. I know I have a lot of products like that. Um, and I feel like this just blends out so seamlessly. It never looks muddy or cakey. And it obviously works so well for foundation, but I know this is meant to be used with the Minimalist, which is Merit's almost like stick foundation concealer. So I think that's why, like since this pairs really well with any sort of stick foundation or stick like cream product, that's why it has been working so well with like those thicker, cream products because I feel like it's so soft and densely packed that it just blends it out so beautifully. So I wanted to mention this because this is another like multi-purpose brush just like that MAC 170 um, but I think it works so good for any cream products if you're in the market. Okay I recently picked this up well it's probably been like a couple months but I love it a lot and it's the Omnia BOM-185 brush and I got it from Target actually because you can order it online. And I use this for cream bronzer and cream blush. And ever since I got it, I've been using it every day. Um, so even though it's new to my collection, I do feel like it's going to hold up really well. Like these bristles are just like really good quality. And this is very dense. Um, I actually think this would work great for foundation as well. I just haven't tried it in that way yet. Um, but it's very dense. And it's also like a bit tapered. So if you can tell, it's like a pretty like narrow oval but it kind of like tapers up in the middle to be more domed, which is like so perfect for cream bronzer. Um, Cause like even that NARS one, like I'll dip it in, or like today I use the M Cosmetics um, bronzer and blush sticks and I just drew it on my face, both the bronzer and the blush. And then I just like dot, 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 dot and blend it out. And this does such a good job blending because of that shape where it kind of is like taller in the middle, but only slightly and then tapers down. And because it's so dense, I feel like it just like, you know pushes that product like into your face whereas I feel like like this one I do love for cream bronzer but it would kind of like disperse it more everywhere so if I use something like the NARS um which is so pigmented yeah. it would just kind of like get you know all over my cheek which is like a look you know but if I want something more of like a contour I definitely prefer something like this because it like just keeps it sort of in that area because it's so dense. It just yeah, kind that's of, how I feel about this one because it's also small. Yeah, so like it, really it just like kind of like it pushes it into your face. Um, so I really love this brush and like obviously all the ones I'm talking about are so old, like four or five years old. So for a brush, for me to get a brush and to like it this much is saying a lot. So I'm really impressed with it. And yeah, I do want to try it with foundation. I actually feel like it would even work with like powder foundation because it's mm -hmm. so dense. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, so it's a really good brush. I want to try more from this brand. And this is one of the more affordable ones that I'm talking about. Okay, this is probably my most expensive brush, but also the brush that has like changed the bronzer game for me. I don't know about you guys, but finding a good bronzer brush has been so incredibly challenging Powder for bronzer. Me. Powder yeah. bronzer, I should say, yeah. Yeah, I feel like I've used different um, cream bronzer brushes that I've liked. But I forever was using the JH03 brush, I believe, from Jaclyn Hill and Morphe, that collab, because I really liked the shape. It was similar to this, where it's almost like, I mean, actually almost reminds me of your Omnia one, but mm -hmm. it's definitely more like loosely packed. And it's, so it's like an oval shape, and then it tapers up in the middle, so the middle is the highest point, and then it has like, you know, shorter bristles on the sides, but it's very small, so it like fits into the hollows of your cheeks. But the Jaclyn one that I was using was much bigger, so I used that for years, even though it was way too big for my face. I felt like I was just putting bronzer everywhere, mm -hmm. which is fine. Yeah, I, 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 I like stopped using that after like a month, because I'm like, I can't do it's this. So it's big. so big, it was so big. And I know that was kind of emulated from that Tom Ford bronzer mm -hmm. brush that everyone loved for years, but I just wanted something smaller and I would order brushes all the time on Sephora that would like come out and be like oh this is it this is my new bronzer brush I can feel it and then I would try it and be like that didn't work for me at all and return them this was a vicious cycle for me and then I saw Alana Davison rave about this the Refer 05 brush and she said it was her all-time favorite powder bronzer brush and I feel like 
the way I do my makeup is really similar to hers. Like she loves bronzer. I love bronzer as well. I load it up. I love it. And I love to put it like on the perimeter of my face, just like she does. Like I feel like the way that we, our makeup looks end up are really similar to mm -hmm. hers. Um, so I knew I would love this and I knew it was pricey, but I thought to myself like, she says it's worth it. I trust her. She's a bronzer queen and it is worth it. I feel like it just picks up the perfect amount of powder like right in the middle. And what I like about it is if you want like a more contoured look, if you're going in with like a contour powder, you could just go right in like this and pick it up and then go right in the middle and it'll like pretty like densely pack it. But if you want like a lighter touch, just turn it on its side and like dip in like this. And then I just kind of like tap like this and it'll be a little bit of a lighter layer and obviously cover like more surface area. So I love that you have like kind of more options. Like sometimes if it's a more sheer bronzer, I'll go in like this and then I'll tap it out with the side and it just never looks splotchy. It never looks, um, you know, like more pigmented in one spot. Like, you know, sometimes bronzer brushes, like if you lay it down somewhere and then you try to blend it out, yeah. it looks more pigmented there. This brush will never do that to you. It just fits in the hollows of my cheeks. I usually like, I, it's small enough that I can like put it on my eyelids too, on the sides of my nose, on my forehead. It's just the perfect size, the perfect amount of fluffiness, denseness. I can't say enough good things about it. I know it's expensive. And to be honest with you, like I kind of wish it had a little more weight to it. I think it looks really nice and chic, like the black with the cream bristles. Um, but I think for the price, like maybe they could have added some weight in there because it just feels a little like, I don't want to say cheap. Well, is it not wood? Yeah, I guess that's, it's aluminum. Yeah, like this is like wood underneath this. Yeah, is wood. like wood handles just feel like. Yeah, so that's probably my only gripe, but that's obviously, it has nothing to do with the performance of the brush. And like I said, I do like how it looks. Worth the cost. I think if you are a powder bronzer user, lover like I am, like I think bronzer could be like my favorite <laughs> product, um, this brush will change your life because it changed mine. Okay, once again, we have a brush that I think is five years old. And to speak to this, I would say do not waste your money on makeup brushes. I feel like definitely yeah. find those ones that you love and that you like. But I definitely do not want to promote people like just spending a ton of money on makeup brushes. Yeah, I think we found these and they're worth the money, the yeah. more expensive ones. But there are a lot of good, affordable makeup brushes I've tried yeah. in the past. And, like, but I'm just saying like, like we used to do this too where we would like buy a ton of brushes, affordable or not. Like we would go yeah, to Morphe. Yeah, you're right, yeah. We would go to Morphe and buy like 10 brushes each. And like, we did not need that. Like yeah. you really only need like a small assortment um, unless you're a makeup artist. So I just wanted to point that out because like my likes haven't really changed in a long, in a long time. Yeah, which if you have a good brush, that's good. But my favorite affordable brushes are definitely real, real techniques. techniques. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this last one is the only eyeshadow brush I'm talking about. And I think that in the past, when I wore more eyeshadow, I definitely had a lot more brushes and would probably have included more in this video. But now I just don't wear a lot of eyeshadow. And so it was a really easy decision because I use this with powders and creams. And it's the Real Techniques Base Shadow Brush. And this specific one was in a holiday set, I think from five years ago. It was when we lived in our last apartment, for yes. sure. We filmed that Black Friday holiday yeah, video. Yeah, so four or five? Four or five years ago, Four yeah. or five years ago. So it's, again, lasted so long, and it looks like this little dinky brush, but like it definitely has like held up, and I just love this brush. So I looked it up before we talked about it to make sure it's still available, and it's available in a set with the one that Britta's gonna talk mm -hmm. about, um, and the set is like $8, yeah. or something like so cheap. <laughs> well, it's not $8. I think it's like nine. Really? An Ulta. Okay. But I'll link they it have it on below. Target too, I think. Yeah. And again, I hope that they haven't changed the brush, but I, I wouldn't think that they have. Um, so my favorite way to use this is like for an all over shadow. And because it's like, it's pretty loose. Like it's, again, it's kind of like the, the density of this brush where like there is some looseness, but there's also some density. So this works really well with powder shadows. Like I'll just, you know, pick it up and put it all over and then just kind of like blend it through my crease and then I'm done. Like it's just kind of like my one and done brush because I feel like because of the tapered look and like the little bit of looseness, it does blend out um, things into your crease just fine. And then this works great with cream shadows, um, like sticks, pot cream shadows, anything. I can like apply it onto my eye and then like dab, 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 blend it out. I can 
dip it into a pot and then like blend it on like I've used this with basically every cream shadow I own and then even like my beloved Tom Ford honeymoon palette I prefer those um if that's like the wet dry Tom Ford formula and I prefer those wet and this is my favorite bl brush to apply those and same thing like I don't get crazy with eyeshadow and usually those I just do one all over and then I also blend it into my crease so I will spray this brush with MAC Fix Plus and then dip it into those shadows and then just like dab it on and it lays down like the perfect amount. It like looks high metallic and really pretty um, and then it also just blends into my crease really well and I was doing like a few friends makeup um, for the wedding that we were in this past summer and I used that Tom Ford palette and basically everyone for the crease color or the shadow color. Um, the lid color and I was like trying to use other brushes I had just like laying around and I did bring this one and then I had to go in my bag and get this because it just wasn't laying down those shadows how they should be laid down and I felt like this brush was like the real game changer so I really love this brush um, out of all the eye brushes I own I think it's the most versatile I actually think that you could even like put shadow under your Probably eye if you this, hold it because it's not so wide um, you could probably even nose contour with this mm -hmm. if you do that. Like, it's a good brush. Okay, and my eyeshadow brush was also a Real Techniques brush. This is the Deluxe Crease Brush. And the first version I got of this was in that set. I still have it too. And, but then I had purchased two more, I think. And so I just discontinued use of that first one because it was older. But this is the best shadow brush. I feel like, so, That's so funny. I want to know how you use this. Okay. Well, so I use this for concealer. I think it's really no, good for I'm concealer. Gonna... Okay, okay, sorry. Go, go. That ahead. was going to be my like, oh, okay. tips and tricks. Okay, but it's fine. So I will always go in with like a fluffier brush in the crease. And then I take, well, I was going to mention this because it's like my sixth brush, but I'll just say the Morphe 506 brush is so small and since we have slightly hooded eyes, I usually take this in like the outer and then like bring it into the crease and then I'll like blend them all together. But when you're using more than one shade or if you're like deepening up the look at all, I feel like the line of demarcation is visible and I hate that. And this is the best brush to blend the edges. I feel like, or even if I just put bronzer in my crease, which I do often, I just use this, like I take it and I just blend out the edges, like swipe, swipe really quick and it just blends it and it makes it look diffused, like it's diffusing into your skin. You'll never have a harsh line with this brush, I guarantee because it. Because it's so dense. Yes, right? it's yeah. so dense. Um, but that's why it's like so quick too. I mm -hmm. feel like it's just like bam, bam. You could even like dig this directly in the powder, but then I think you might pick up a little too much, at least for my personal preference. But it's so easy for that. And then it's also my brush of choice when I'm using any cream shadow. I feel like usually with a cream shadow, I'll draw it onto the lid and then I'll use this and just blend it out again so effortless so fast it just blends out it blends out into the crease because it also i would think it works for everyone but it fits my crease shape really well hmm. yeah i just think it's a little big and dense for me for no but if you're putting an eyeshadow all over the lid oh yeah 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 i'm saying like a lid crease try out cream. this one though for creams it's okay it's a goodie but this one i feel like i put the cream on my lid and then i just blend it on Got the it. lid so it's definitely big enough to blend yeah. on a full lid and then I just bring it into the crease. And like I said, if you use this in the crease, there will be no harsh lines ever. And it just blends out creams so effortlessly. And then I have also used this for concealer and it works really, really well for that because it's so dense and small. Mm -hmm. So because it has so many different uses, I feel like this is the brush in the eyeshadow world that I could never be without. Like if I travel without it, I feel like I can see the lines in my crease. <laughs> Maybe no one else can, but I always notice, I'm like, oh, my eyeshadow looks like way too harsh. This is not how I would want it to look. Um, so for those reasons, I just think it's so good. And these two come in a set, you guys. Yeah. So if you don't own either, get the yeah. set. Yeah, it's it's so good. And specifically, if you wear a lot of cream shadows, I feel like you need this because I feel like it's the perfect amount of density to blend out a cream shadow quickly like before they dry down if you're working with like the Laura Mercier ones I feel like those kind of dry down pretty quick and this will like blend it in two seconds like that one probably works too but mm -hmm. maybe it takes a little longer yeah it's just looser yeah definitely and smaller than that one yeah so it's so good and Real Techniques is really good so good they, they haven't are... launched like any new brushes they recently. haven't and I had I had some other Real Techniques brushes that I used for a long time and like that duo fiber one I use for cream products, but we were trying to narrow down to our top five, 
but overall I think that every brush I tried from them the quality for the price has been amazing they're, they're newer brushes I which one did I get and I was like this isn't their normal quality Hmm. I picked up one maybe last year and it wasn't yeah, they do like what I remember one off these, collections. But like their core collection, which is in like these like um, yeah. like solid colors, those mm -hmm. have all been really good. Like they're original uh, ones. Oh now I'm excited to see what the holiday launches are I though. Oh, know, I know. We'll pick up extras. Yeah. I just said like don't buy too many brushes. Yeah. No, but they're really they're really good. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We know it was a long one, but we really wanted to be detailed because like we said, a lot of these aren't really cheap brushes, so if you wanted to purchase them, we want you to understand like how we use them and why we like them. And if you own any of these brushes, let us know. And yeah, we or them. if you have a one holy grail brush that you recommend yes. to all your friends and family, let us know down below because we're always looking to add yeah. to our collection on a small scale. And that's so true because I think I've convinced our best friend to buy this brush and she owns this brush, right? Yeah. And I'm pretty sure she owns these too. I'm sure she owns this. And I don't think she ever bought this. But yeah. it's like, it's we are like, we give brush recommendations. Yeah. <laughs>